How do the concepts of Hinduism reinforce the concept of panentheism? Hinduism reinforces panentheism by accepting the idea that the causative force, or God, periodically starts over by dissolving the existing universe and building a new one. The Hinduistic concept of the causative force and self being identical explains why the idea makes sense that the soul came from the causative force and is a part of the causative force. If the universe was made by the causative force, it can just as easily be uncreated by the causative force. The soul then has one of two possibilities in terms of immortality and mortality. The soul could have the characteristics of immortality and be able to exist even if the universe were uncreated or dissolved. In which case the soul could have nowhere to go but into the all-present omnipresent, panentheistic causative force, or the soul could be mortal and die with the death of the universe, which is rejected by Hinduism. Modern religions since the last 4,000 years have put forth the concept that the essence of human is the soul and that the soul is immortal. With the uncreation of the universe, the soul would have nowhere to go but back into the causative force. This concept provides significance to the idea that we exist. No greater significance could be assigned to life than the significance of being a part of something so immense that it actually exists within something bigger than the universe itself. What could be more significant than being a part of an entity capable of creating the universe? But there is something more significant and that is where symbiotic panentheism comes into the picture. Symbiotic panentheism goes even further than panentheism for it is not only rationalizes the concept that the soul is significant because it is part of the causative force but symbiotic panentheism adds the idea that we as beings actually have a significant role to play in relationship to the causative force. The causative force needs the soul. The causative force needs you. Symbiotic panentheism doesn't just say this is so, but goes on to rationalize how and why the soul could be significant to the causative force herself. This does not go against Hindu concepts, rather it adds to them. What does Hinduism reinforce about the significance of existence, life? Hinduism maintains that the indwelling, all-pervading, supreme being, or Brahman, is identical with the individual self. The concept of the causative force being identical with self, or soul, is what gives life meaning. It indicates that the source from which life came is the causative force. But what about the reason for our separation from the causative force? Why did we leave the causative force in the first place? We need patience. We can only handle one question at a time, and right now we are dealing with the size of the causative force. The reason for our separation from the causative force will come when we leave religion and study 
philosophy. All the major modern religions of the world absorbed the Hinduism concept of a causative force and the existence of eternal soul. Religions that evolved after Hinduism, Judaism, 1000s BC, Buddhism, 500s BC, Christianity, 0 to 4 AD, and Islam, 500s AD, ignored the Hindu premise that the causative force and the soul, the essence of the human being, are identical or directly connected. Western religions following Hinduism rejected the premise that you are a piece of the causative force, just as a heart can be human but not a human. You can be a part of the causative force but not be the causative force itself. How did Western religions manage to rationalize this lack of connection between the causative force and soul? The Western religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam were unable to overcome what they saw to be the hard side of the causative force. The misery, the suffering, the loneliness, the loss of loved ones, the despair, the lack of hope, the lack of meaning, the pain, the hatred, the envy, the greed. There seemed to be no logical explanation to it all, and so... Western religions refused to accept the connection between the soul and the causative force that the Hindus offered us. Religions could not rationalize the concept that if we were pieces of the causative force, connected to the causative force, then how could we do these things to each other? How could the causative force do these things to us? And so... Western religion moved on, accepting only a part of the picture. Western religions accepted only the part of the picture they could understand regarding the connectedness between the causative force and ourselves. And this is the model of traditional classical theism. How does Hinduism help? us to understand what life is. The Hindu concept of the existence of nine substances, the four atoms in space, time, ether, mind, and soul in the universe helps us understand that quote-unquote life is the soul. Hinduism professes the idea that the universe is composed of nine substances. It specifically separates the concept of body composed of the four atoms and wrapped in space, time, and ether, from the mind and the mind from the soul. This separation explains the essence of life. This helps us understand that the body is just the body. Life, on the other hand, is not the physical body, but rather the essence of the individual is the soul itself. The mind, in turn, provides the means by which the soul is able to to relate to the body's experiences within the universe. The mind provides awareness. The mind provides the means by which the soul is capable of connecting to the body and conversely, the mind provides the means by which the body connects to the soul. What about the universe itself? The universe is the location environment within which the soul can travel, experience, and learn using the body as the means of travel, the vessel of transportation and connection to the physical, the means of being capable of existing within our universe is achieved through the spiritual, the soul, the physical, the universe, the means of travel, the body, the means of connecting the physical with the spiritual, and the spiritual with the physical, the mind, the body being the vessel of travel within a universe created by the causative force holds the essence of a human being. The body is a vessel for the soul, the soul traveling 
the universe within the body is able to function within the universe and learn, experience, participate within the universe through awareness. Awareness being able to connect to the soul is the function of the mind. And what of life? Hinduism teaches us that life is not our short existence in this universe as we know it, but rather life is what we experience today and what we will experience after quote unquote death. The Hindus believe that life as we know it is an experience the soul passes through. If this is true, you can be fairly sure that the complexity of creating such an intricate process has a purpose, for it would seem to be far too intricate to have been established for no reason.